choosing our eternal destiny. In the first reading, Ezekiel corrects two incorrect Jewish beliefs. First, that children inherit the guilt of their ancestors and are punished for their sins. And secondly, that God is more strict than merciful. Jesus explains through the gospel parable that God will punish us only for our sins and that God's mercy overrules strict justice. Today's psalm appeals to God's compassion and mercy, begging him to wipe away our sins and extend mercy to us. In the second reading, our final choice for God, made by perfect obedience to him, will be rewarded. For instance, it is because of Christ's perfect obedience to God's will in emptying himself, taking human form, and humbling himself by accepting even death, death on a cross, that God the Father exalted Christ, bestowed on him the name above every other name, and made Jesus the recipient of universal adoration. In today's gospel parable, a man with two sons tells both to go out to work in the vineyard. The first son says he will not go, but later he regrets his refusal and goes to work. It's about sons, right? Sons are very stubborn. He represents the tax collectors and public sinners who refuse to obey God's commandments. But after listening to John the Baptist and Jesus, repented and became eligible for eternal reward. The second son says that he will go but does not go. He represents the chief priests and the elders the scribes and the Pharisees. By their pride and their refusal to obey God's call to repentance through John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, these so-called religious people excluded themselves from the eternal reward. The lesson for us is a necessity for offering a continual yes to the saving act of God. Even when we say no, God gives us many chances of conversion, repentance, and doing his will. Who are these two sons? The first son could be a repentant alcoholic a drug addict, a chronic gambler, or a sexual deviant. The first son could be a member of a poor village parish who reached out to the needy in the community. This first son could be a pastor who calls parishioners to true repentance. The first son could be a church member who decides to tithe, or a young person who decides to remain true to their parents, obeying and listening to what they tell them. All these choose to obey Christ sacrificially. Who could the second son be? A regular churchgoer who refuses Christ's entry into his or her heart and life, and lives a pagan life on weekdays, a Sunday Christian. The second son could be a Christian who refuses to obey Christ in the sensitive areas of life. A second son could be a priest 
whose sermon is designed to please people rather than to please God. Again, a second son could be a church that ignores issues of justice and mercy. A second son could be a formation program that neglects to teach the right thing. In short, all people who appear to be faithful, but deep down in their hearts are not, represent the second son. William Barclay, a scripture scholar, calls this parable the better of two bad sons. Jesus, repre Jesus presents us with a vineyard owner who has two sons. Both sons are asked by their father to go and work in his vineyard. The first son, when asked, says no. He later changes his mind and goes. The second son says yes, but does not go. Jesus then asks his listeners which of the two did the father's will. They answer the first. And their correct answer strengthens Jesus' case against them. The message of the story is crystal clear. There are two very common classes of people in the world. First, there are those who, like the parable's first ark son, whose practice is far better than their profession. Second, there are people like the second ark son whose profession is better than their practice. Why the first class should be preferred to the second, neither is anything like perfect. Because the really good man is the man in whom profession and practice meet and match. The ideal son in this parable would be one who accepted the father's orders with grace and who unquestioningly and fully carried them out as Jesus obeyed his father's orders to the, side, to the point of dying on the cross. This parable found only in Matthew outlines for us two responses to God's will. The first son says, I will not, but changing his mind and does what is needed. The second son says, I will go, but does not go. Verses 31 to 32 make it clear that the repentant tax collectors and prostitutes are seen in the first son, and the second son signifies the self-righteous among the chief priests and the elders. When John the Baptist called people to repent, tax collectors and prostitutes repented and were baptized. It was easy for them to repent because their sins were obvious even to themselves. The religious leaders, however, were not able to repent we are not able to admit their need for repentance, and therefore they rejected John and his call. So also they rejected Christ. We are reminded of Jesus' words earlier in this gospel. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. The life-saving difference between the two sons was the fact that one had the good sense to remember the love of his father to turn from evil and decide to do what was right. We, we each need to lead a responsible Christian life saying yes to God. Each one of us is responsible to God for every one of our actions and the just God will punish or reward each one of us according to our actions. As we do not know at what moment death will take us, our only guarantee of dying in God's friendship 
is to live in that friendship always saying yes to God in our deeds. We should become men and women who profess our faith in word and in deed. Remembering that not all those who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. God is ever with us to strengthen us, to pardon us, and to lift us up again when through human weakness we stumble on the road. God is calling us right now, inviting us to work in his vineyard, inviting us to say yes to him with our words and actions. Let us accept God's invitation by purifying our hearts in the sacrament of reconciliation, by resolving our acts upon our promises each morning before we get out of bed, and by declaring interiorly that people will be able to identify us as followers of Christ, not by empty words or pious gestures, but simply by our Christian actions. In this way, we shall live a life filled with the joy that doing the will of the Father brings to us. Amen.